I'm truly blessed to have a dedicated space to do my art. But I remember days that I was on the dining room table, working out of a closet. Whatever your creative space, what's important is you need to make it work for you as best as it can. And that's what this reno rejuvenation was really all about. It was about getting more workable space, getting better lighting for video camera, taking pictures, as well as just improving the usability for how I'm using the space. Now this isn't a custom craft room art studio rehaul. There are no custom cabinets here. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars were not spent in creating this space. There are grad sale finds, things that I got at the ReStore, and furniture and storage items that I've had that I've used in my teaching before I retired or I've used in my kitchen that I have repurposed in this studio space to make it work better. Will everything in this video be a perfect fit for you? No. What I'm hoping is that you're going to get a couple of nuggets that you can take and run with that is going to improve your space, whether you're working on the dining room table, whether you're working out of a closet, or an old bedroom in the basement. The important thing is we need to create and we need to make our space work. So I'm gonna put the camera down. I'm gonna show you the before, and then I'm going to show you what it is now. Here's my art studio before the reorganization. It's called a flex room or an office space. There's no built-in closet or built-in cabinetry. It's a bit of an awkward shape and not a whole lot of space. I'm just a woman building up her craft empire. Welcome to my art studio. So when you enter this space, the first thing you're going to see is this rather large cabinet. Now I was very fortunate this was at a garage sale that a high school had put on. It is a lovely storage cabinet. Now what is in here are the extras. This is primarily storage. Things that are in here are things that I do not access on a regular basis. I've got wooden pieces, I've got extra substrates, my travel bag for when I have create dates, my punches, lace, substrates of different kinds, all my gel print, printing supplies are in here, extra mediums that I buy in bulk or I buy when they're on sale. Now I have these baskets. Now you're going to see these baskets again and again because they can be swapped out with what goes in my rascal carts or what goes on my table. And you'll see how that all works. And I love that they're all the same size and I can do that. So supplies that I'm not using, like my embossing materials, stays here. And if I'm using it, I can just swap it out with something that's already there. At the top, I have a bit of a display surface as well, but behind here, because this cabinet is so deep, I've got blank canvas boards, watercolor paper, stencil cut cutting sheets, my copy paper, deli paper is stored back here. I've got a few scrapbook pages that were gifted to me, my punches, mixed media boards, and my 
quote binder that holds quotes that I have printed out, full sheets, and then I've used parts of it and the rest is stored in there. But it's tucked away and I can display my art in front. Up top I have more boxes that store some of my old folk art patterns and other things again that I don't access on the regular and a place to display my art. We'll go through this in more detail but next to this we have a Raskog cart there's another rolly cart behind there. My primary workspace that fits the camera on my, this is just a table that has fold lay out legs. Just a plywood tabletop that has been painted teal. Going around, we have my printer, my secondary desk workspace. Now as we're moving along, we this is going to be my primary workspace. This table is 4 feet by 33 inches wide. It's extra wide to allow me to have my extra supplies that I'm going to use on a regular basis on there as well as I can have my tripod and my camera for videotaping. I needed a certain depth to be able to have a workspace where I'm actually creating and then have my camera. Now things that are either on the table or right at arm's reach are things that I use pretty much every project. So in this Raskog cart at the top I've got paint, I've got my mediums, my spray bottles, my Murphy's oil soap, down below, I've got boxes of pieces of sediments, my distress ink, rags for cleanup, and other mediums that I don't use as much. So again, from the top, we have things that we're using every day, some days periodically. Back there, I have another rolly cart that has mark making tools glue sticks, assorted things that I do not access. Bag from Michaels that I store all my paint that has been swatched out at the top. My stamp platform is here. I don't use that often. Metal caddy with brushes, scissors, palette knives. Now this is a display for cards that I purchased for craft fairs. And I pulled it out and I thought, gee, I wonder if I can use that. So I have my fine line applicators here, nice and handy. My black, my metallics, my white paint my Prussian blue, the tubes of paint that I grab regularly. They're very handy. My craft Tim Holtz glass media mat, which I love. Now back here is something that I've just added and I have to thank somebody who posted in one of my Facebook, one of the Facebook groups and she used a shoe rack. And I remembered that I had this. This was actually in that cabinet that we saw earlier. And I thought, oh, because that's going to give me vertical space as well as space on the table. So now I can have easily double, if not triple the supplies right here within reach. And I love that. So on the top, I have my baby wipes that I've decoupaged napkin on to match my theme. Metal cans, so I have my blending brushes, pens, pencils. And I love that my phone can actually be up here, not on my paint surface where it's going to get paint on it. Now on the first shelf, now these baskets 
I got at Dollar Tree. And I have them, you would have seen them in the cabinet. I also have them in the Raskog carts as well. They fit all three areas. So I can take out something from one basket and put it here if I'm using it on a regular basis. Like for instance, I have my embossing powders and ink pads. I don't use that very often, but I can take that take this basket out, put it here, and then I have it at the ready and I'm more likely to use it. So I'm putting things here now, either the things that were on my table all the time, like my makeup sponges and blending tools, gel pans, micron pans, exacto knives, or things that I have but I have not been using like the jelly roll pans. So that's here and I moved that out from where it was because I wasn't using it and I want to start using them. Then over here we have water activated mediums. I've got my color sparks, my neo color twos, my distress crayons and everything that's in there. Again, this is something I'm not using a lot right now, but I love them. There's a reason I bought them and I need to honor them by using them. So now it's right here and I can see this. In this basket, I have some of my DIY mark making tools, stamps that I have made or dollar store texture items, shelf liners, Things I use. Again, this is making it more accessible to my work. In here, I've got my color wheels, but this is also just going to be a place where I can collect little bits of stuff that I just used. I have a little bit over. This is its resting place to either be used in another project or to be filed away in a more permanent place. But and I love that they all fit here and they all are out of the way. In another basket, I have just some paper towels for cleanup and it's just going to hold my heat tool. But when I don't need it, I can be putting it just off to the side. Now I admit this space is a little bit limited. The table that I had or the desk that I had before was a corner desk, but it was five feet on each side. It was super narrow, which was one of the problems, and the positioning didn't allow for great lighting, but it was a little bit longer. So one of my concerns is that I won't necessarily have enough space here, but I have another five foot table that is 32 inches across just around the corner where I can put items while I'm creating. I can set up a jelly printing session over there. Something is wet and drying, I can put it over there. This is also going to be my desk slash office space where I can do the editing of my videos all in the same room. Because before, I could not really do that in the room with the way I had it situated. Now over there, I have my laser printer and storage below for office supplies. The bulldog clips, elastics, pens, magnets, assorted things. Down below, I have my deco art paints in a caddy. I'm not getting rid of them. I don't use them a whole lot, but I, I can bring it up and use them. It doesn't have to be taking up massive amounts of space, tabletop space, unless I'm using it. Otherwise, it can be tucked way down there. Now this five foot table is awesome. 
in the corner I have my Silhouette Cameo. This was a retirement gift and I love it, but I wasn't using it because I didn't have it on a full-size table. It was actually just sitting on a 22-inch narrow filing cabinet and it was really awkward to use because you need the laptop right next to it and then using the scanner and the printer. So now all of those things can be close together and I have a great space that I can use my silhouette, cut at the same time, have this space still usable. I just have to pull it away from the wall to allow for the cutting space. The mats are all there. Everything's just ready to go. And I love that. So I'm anxious to use this and use it more. I, I'm trying to maximize the use of all the supplies, the investments that I have made. You'll notice that I have displayed my art. I have my inspiration wall and I highly encourage you to hang your creations up whatever they are. One of the things that I did purchase is this plate rack from Ikea and it allows me to display, I've got my art journals up there, it allows me to put canvases up there. It's something that I absolutely love and I would, I plan to get more of them or get my husband to make some and fill the entire wall and then you can swap out the canvases at any time. Now down below here we have another two Rascal carts from Ikea. Now just FYI, while you may love the colors of the Rascog carts. Michaels also sells them, although I prefer the Ikea ones. They're a little sturdier and I believe they are cheaper. Canadian Tire in Canada also carries very similar carts. So if you're not in a place where you can get to an Ikea, check out Canadian Tire. Now, with these Roscog carts, I've organized the materials again. The ones that I, things that I use all the time, pretty much every project are on the top. So if we look at this one, I have my six by stick, six, eight by ten stencils in here at the top. So it's really easy to pull this out, bring it to my workspace, be it this workspace and find the stencils I want or my teal table workspace. In this basket are just a collection of ephemera, bits and bobs that I've pulled out that I want to use and they're just being stored here. This kind of changes over time, but I find, again, I need that place to collect these items. I've got, for instance, all my butterflies or dragonflies are here. I use that on the regular, so this is where they are stored. Some things never get put out of here sometimes, and other times they get swapped out The other thing that I have here is my inspiration book and I take pictures, I print off things that I see online, ideas, phrases, just collection of ideas. I started this and then I didn't have a space for it so I'm hoping when it's right here I can grab it and go. Down below in these Sterilite containers, which I love because you can clip them together. Sterilite containers, and you can buy multiples of these. They just snap, snap, 
with the lid and it's very portable. These are great for create dates as well. So I have a couple of this with this size and I have a smaller one that some of my stamps are on, but they're great for taking on create dates as well. So in the Sterilite container, I have napkins that because I've been doing a lot of art journaling with napkins. So since they since I've been doing that, I took them out of that big cabinet that we first saw and have them right close to my workable space. So I can just grab it and have it right next to me and then it can be stored over here. Down below I have my ink tense blocks and ink tense pencils. Now the cart here is all about stamps. My texture stamps that I use all the time are at the top. Ink pads, acrylic plates, foam stamps which I have to dig out and use as well as smaller stamps or seasonal stamps. So again, what's at the top are things I use the most. And these plastic envelopes I just love for my stamps. I find I'm using them so much more. Now, these carts are stored away here, which gives me lots of floor space for my chair to go from my one workspace to the other workspace. But when I'm creating over here, both of these carts, because they're on wheels, and this is why I love these so much, can come here and there's space and I can, they're right at my left hand side and I now can access them all very, very easily. So those are considerations and that's why I love the carts. So I showed you my six by six stencils. They fit nicely on the top of the Rascog cart. My 12 by 12 ones are also in scrapbook binders, but they are actually in a magazine rack underneath my work table. So they're out of the way, but they are easily accessible. So my last space is over here, and this is a filing cabinet. Again, a garage sale find. It's scratched, it's dented. It needs a coat of paint, so it will get a facelift. I love that it's magnetic, so I can put my magnets on here, and they have another surface to display. Up here, I've got a mini file. I also have things that are on tissue paper that are printed, things that need to be filed, projects on the go. My quote binder, which I flip through when I'm looking for a particular quote. Now, in here, and I'm not going to give a detailed explanation, we have things by theme. So flowers, magazine picks based on the theme, collage elements, templates, die cuts. That's what's all in here and I'll put a link to that video. I've got coloring books here, vintage papers, modeling paste on tissue papers, extra papers, book paper, brown paper, gauze, music papers, that's all in this drawer. Down below, more stuff, collage papers, basically my gel prints, both more full sheets and my little sheets that are stored here. But it's easily accessible and yet at the same time organized and tucked out of the way. 
So the main reason that this revamping occurred is because of the lighting in my studio. I had two problems. It wasn't bright enough. And when you live on the Pacific West Coast, we have long, cloudy, rainy winters. And light is at a premium. And that meant that I couldn't create in my space. Or if I did, I either had shadows on my work or it was discolored because the light fixtures and the bulbs that I had were the wrong ones. So that prompted the move of the furniture, but we also solved the lighting. What I use now, we use, I discovered LED bulbs are brighter than the incandescent bulbs. Also, we bought bulbs, LED bulbs that are daylight bulbs. That means they have a rating of 5,000 Kelvins or Ks. It's right on the box. And those bulbs, are, you get a bright white light. It will not have a yellow hue. The light fixtures that I had before discolored the project. So when you were looking on the video, if I was using the light, it was distorting the colors and I couldn't take pictures. So now I have solved that problem with the right bulb. And those kind of bulbs can be bought and put into desk lamps as well as light fixtures. And then we bought track lighting where you're able to manipulate the rods to get them in the right position and then manipulate each individual of the six fixtures. So I can have, some of the lights are pointing to my primary workspace. Some are actually directed on my secondary workspace, office space, desk. And some are even pointing to the filing cabinet. So whatever space you have, I hope there's one idea in what I showed you that you can take and use to improve the usability of your space. But no matter where you're working, where you're creating, keep creating. It's good for us. Bye for now.